Today on the newscast, a squadron of US F-22 fighter jets heads to the Middle East to deter Russia as Israeli leaders express growing alarm over the Russia-Iran military alliance. Get all the breaking details next. Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. A squadron of F-22 fighter jets is heading to the Middle East. These are U.S. fighter jets. And you may say, what's so breaking about that news? We've seen, obviously, U.S. fighter jets over the skies of the Middle East many times over the past few decades. Well, folks, this time there is a new and interesting wrinkle these F-22 fighter jets have been sent to the Middle East, and they're there this week. They're flying over the skies of the Middle East right now to deter Russia and Russian aggression, according to the U.S. military. Could there be a bit of a showdown there in the skies between Russia and the U.S.? And what is Israel saying, uh, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, saying about this growing Russia-Iran military alliance, folks? It is not very promising if you're sitting in Jerusalem right now and you see Russia, a nuclear powerhouse, with some 10,000 troops at your doorstep in Syria, openly aligned with your greatest enemy, the Iranian regime, a regime which is devoted to the destruction of the world's one and only Jewish state. Perilous times. We're going to break it down for you in a minute. But before I do, hey, a quick reminder to subscribe to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube. As I've been sharing this week, just to kind of drive the point home, we have in all of our viewership, and we've got many, many viewers every day, some 625,000 subscribers by the grace of God, but some 73% of our regular viewers are not subscribed to the channel. That's hard to believe, but folks, look, it's completely free. Just click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well. We'd love to have you on board as watchmen and women on the wall and make it official for such a time as this. We've got a goal we'd love to hit by the end of the summer of 700,000 subscribers. And hey, it's not for our glory. It's for the glory of God Almighty. This channel is by God and for God. That's how we view it. And if he sees fit to expand our territory for such a time as this and get the message out on a broader platform and for a broader audience, then that's all due to him. And of course, a big thanks to you for being with us and subscribing. Okay, let's get into the big story today. Uh, U.S. F-22 Raptor fighter jets, a squadron of them, left Europe a few days ago. They're now flying over the Middle East, in particular over Syria. Here's a little bit of the background here, folks. According to CENTCOM and the U.S. general there, there have been some very close calls uh, between U.S. and Russian fighter jets since March 2023 in particular. And the U.S. is accusing Russia of, quote, unsafe and uh, unprofessional behavior over the skies of Syria, in particular reckless behavior, according to the United States, where Russian fighter jets are coming way too close to U.S. fighter jets. And in April, there was an attempt by Russian fighter jets to engage in a dogfight with U.S. pilots over Syria. So the U.S. is saying, look, this is getting a bit dangerous. There had been a deconfliction mechanism between Russia and the U.S. in the Middle East where, look, we give each other fair warning, we don't get in each other's way. And the U.S. and CENTCOM are saying, look, since March, that's been out the window and Russia has been engaging in some very provocative behavior above the skies over the Middle East, in particular, again, over Syria, whereas, as I mentioned at the top, Russia has still a strong troop presence. Now, they pulled some of those troops out and sent them to Ukraine, but there is still that Russian presence in Syria, again, at Israel's doorstep. More on that in a minute. And Russia effectively controls the skies over Syria right now. And the problem there for Israel and the United States in particular is Russia's alliance with the Iranian regime, Hezbollah, the Assad regime, and other radical forces in the region. Now, Russia has not responded yet that I've seen to, these, to the arrival of these U.S. fighter jets uh, in the Middle East. But folks, this bears watching because in today's Middle East, expect the unexpected, as we like to say here on the newscast, and the smallest, seemingly smallest incident could provoke a larger conflict. And Russian and U.S. fighter jets going toe-to-toe -to -toe 
in the skies over the Middle East is not a very pleasant scenario, and it could lead to major ripple effects, needless to say. Now, if you watch us on a regular basis, you know we have been detailing the unraveling of the Israel-Russia relationship ever since Russia's invasion of Ukraine commenced back in February 2022. Not only that, we've been documenting that growing Russia-Iran alliance. It is essentially a formal alliance right now. Well, reportedly, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, was speaking uh, before a committee of his fellow lawmakers earlier this week off the record, and he told them that, look, we are having regular conversations with Russian officials where we are expressing our alarm over this Russia-Iran alliance. Now, Israel is going about this pretty quietly, folks. They're not splashing out their major headlines where they're blasting Russia publicly. They're trying to handle this behind the scenes in a very diplomatic way. Benjamin Netanyahu, over the years, has had a solid relationship with Vladimir Putin. During his last go-round as prime minister, he visited Moscow many times and met with Putin. So he's trying to capitalize on that long-standing relationship with Putin and exert some influence there and talk reason to the Russian leaders, saying, hey, you're getting in bed with arguably the most radical regime in the world, which is devoted to our destruction, the Iranian regime, not to mention its proxies like Hezbollah, which Russia has aligned itself with in Syria as well. And Israel is saying, not wise, Vladimir, and what gives here? This is not good. Israel is saying that we are very concerned that uh, advanced American military technology, Western military technology, captured on the battlefields, of Ukraine by Russian forces could then be handed off to the Iranian regime. So that's just one concern that Israel has, and that's why you've seen Israel not supply Iron Dome or any sort of offensive military hardware to Ukraine. But Israel over the past few months has been a little more vocal in some ways in expressing support for Ukraine and has provided some defensive uh, equipment and humanitarian aid as well. Essentially, folks, Israel is saying to Russia, okay, who can play that game, right? You want to align yourself with Iran strongly and openly, then maybe we'll get a little closer, Russia, to your greatest rival, Ukraine. That's how the game is played, folks, on the international stage. A little bit of gamesmanship, perhaps, uh, by Israel. But when you look at that Russia-Iran relationship, as we've documented here in the newscast, Iran supplying Russia with hundreds of attack drones to use in Ukraine and in the process now of building a drone factory east of Moscow where they can roll these Iranian-made drones off the assembly lines. And Iran, of course, is supplying those drones all across the Middle East as well. At the same time, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi is in my backyard today. He's in the Western Hemisphere. He's in Cuba today, I believe. He also visited Venezuela, pit stop in Nicaragua. We posed the question last week here in the newscast, could those Iranian drones be passed off to anti-American forces right here in the Western Hemisphere? I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility, folks, but let's bring it back to Israel and Russia as we wrap. I'm heartened to see that Israeli leaders are so concerned about the Iran-Russia relationship. Folks, I've been sounding the alarm about this for a while, in particular in Syria, as we bring it full circle, Russia again, effectively controls the airspace over Syria. And we talked about that deconfliction mechanism between the U.S. and Russia, which Russia seems to have thrown out the window over the past few months. Israel and Russia also have that so-called deconfliction mechanism where Israel carries out airstrikes against Iran and its proxies in Syria under the noses of Russian soldiers. And Russia says, okay, we're not going to stand in your way. Let's not get in each other's way. Deconfliction. As we close, a closing thought, Iran is supplying Russia with drones and who knows what else for the Ukraine war. Russia has become increasingly reliant, in a sense, on that Iranian technology, military technology. Quid pro quo? What is Iran getting in return? And Netanyahu apparently posed that question as well to this session of lawmakers. What will Russia give Iran? And Israel is gravely concerned about that. Could Russia even provide Iran with nuclear know-how? And the main question I have, and I'm sure it's crossed the minds of Israeli lawmakers if I'm thinking about it, would Russia get to a point where it says to Israel, no more, we will no longer, no longer permit you to conduct airstrikes in Syria? 
we are establishing a no-fly zone over Syria. And needless to say, that would make things very difficult for Israel, folks, because Israel needs that freedom of movement in Syria to strike against Iran and push back Iran and its proxies. Stay tuned. I believe a great betrayal is coming uh, in the Russia-Israel relationship where Russia, as we bring it up to a prophetic, or bring it through a prophetic lens, Russia will lead, I believe, a latter days invasion force against Israel laid out in the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, the war of Gog and Magog, Russia and Iran. That alliance is no coincidence, folks, in these times, I believe, as they will lead that confederation of nations against Israel. The good news is they don't get very far. If you read Ezekiel 38 and 39, you know that the God of Israel the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob intervenes in a mighty, mighty way. And needless to say, that coalition that comes against Israel meets its demise on the mountains of Israel. So, hey, don't fret. Don't be fearful. God is in control. Hey, quick note before we go. Father's Day coming up this Sunday, June 18th. And just wanted to let you know about our Watchman store, which could be some perfect gifts for dad on this Father's Day. Go to shop.tbn.org forward slash Watchman. By popular demand, we've now got some Watchman merch offered here on the channel. Some cool stuff, shirts that say the Watchman and never hold your peace on the back. Hats, mugs, stickers, bumper stickers, and more. So check that out, shop.tbn.org forward slash watchman happy father's day and god bless to all the dads out there thanks so much for joining us here today until tomorrow god bless all of you and remember never hold your peace hey everyone thanks for checking out the watchman newscast make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted and don't forget to share your thoughts insights and comments below thanks for watching we'll see you back here tomorrow